The international break is over, the players are back with Leeds. This is the place for all your build-up to the weekend's action. Leeds are travelling to Spurs and this is the warm-up. Coming up for you this week on the warm-up. Super, Doper, Liam, Cooper. As a player, you go to these nice stadiums, you look up and you're like, whoa, this is amazing. Forget all that, go and do a job. To be honest, it's been nothing short of shocking. It's been absolutely shocking. So welcome to the show this week. It is the warm-up with myself, Rich Williams, and Don Matteo in partnership with NordVPN, the world's leading VPN provider. And if you want to get yourself involved in that, there is a special deal for Leeds United fans, which is on the screen for you right now. Dom, good to see you. Welcome back. Thank you. Nice to be here. Uh, it's been a, a long international break. It always feels like ages. Yeah. The player's been off with England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Brazil. I mean, we can... Name most countries now, can't we? Spain. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's it like when they come back? A few great results for those players as well. Does that bring a confidence back into the camp? Most definitely, yeah. Confidence, we always talk about it. It's everything, isn't it? And I think when you go away with your country, obviously you want to do well, first and foremost, playing for your country. But then it's obviously staying fit as well and when you get your opportunities. I think the players nowadays from my era was at least slightly different than we might have uh, after a, you know, a good result. We might have done something a bit different. Whereas players nowadays... They live their lives so much better, in my opinion. And, you know, I'm sure it's rest, recuperate, and get ready for the next game. And, uh, yeah, there was some brilliant performances. Uh, I don't really mention England too much, obviously. But, yeah, they did get some good, good results. And, obviously, Scotland, absolutely outstanding. Northern Ireland as well, we'll give them some credit. And everyone else. I think, yeah, so for, from the Leeds point of view, the players should be full of confidence. Um, you know, when you go away with your country, you get good results, come back, and you should be buzzing and ready to go. That's what I used to love. If you got a bad result playing for your country, it could affect you going into your next game. But I think the players should come back um, looking forward to this next game. Big game as well. Yeah, uh, Rafinha slightly blooded in oh. one tackle. Yeah. Uh, Calvin Phillips was a heavy one on him, I think, yeah, in the San Marino game. Yeah. You're watching that going, oh, yeah. no, but they're all, they're all back and they're all feeling confident. And they will be as well after that Leicester performance, which now feels like an eternity ago. Is that the best performance of the season so far? I think so. I think we've, we've all kind of mentioned, we've all said that, haven't we? Even speaking to a lot of the other lads as well that do it within the Leeds group of players. And we, yeah, we, we, do, we do mention things like that. And I think... We needed the performance against a good team like Leicester, strong side. Um, and I think the performance, we could have won it, come on, let's be honest, it was a game we could have won. I was a bit gutted we didn't win that game, actually. But they had a couple of chances as well. So it was a good point. And I think for now, it's we move forward and that's what we've got to do. And I think we've had, we've had a couple, couple of good results. We've had that win. We've got that win. So it's like, right, what do we do next? And there's a tough game coming up. So it's all about the preparation after being away from your country and getting ready and being ready for that, for that next game. Uh, the managerial merry-go-round, as always, international break, uh, is the time where clubs tend to make decisions, put it, put it that way. We're going to be speaking about Antonio Conte in just a moment with this big Spurs game. We'll preview for you uh, very shortly. But elsewhere, uh, aside from that in the Premier League, uh, Dean Smith goes from Villa down to Norwich. Eddie Howe goes up to Newcastle. And yeah. your pal Steven Gerrard announced as Villa boss. Good move there? I think so. I think uh, all them three play, all them three managers that you mentioned will will all bring something to all them clubs. They're all very strong managers, in my opinion. Um, knowing Stevie the way I do, you know, um, from all them years ago, he won't change his way, his philosophies, the things he learns, all the coaches that he works with. They're all good lads. Gary Macker, obviously, another one that he, you know, oh, obviously. He's, he's, them two are one of the best partnerships, I think. Um, and they've got other people involved as well. But I think overall, with, with Stevie, he's got something about him that the other, I don't think the other lads have, the other managers have. I don't know, it's just maybe I'm a bit biased, but I just think he brings something different. He, in my opinion, I'm not saying other people don't want it. He feels like he wants to be the best every single time he goes out there. And I'm not doing a disservice to the other managers. I just feel like with Stevie G, he has this some, some kind of 
something about him, it's hard to explain, but he, he's just a winner, an out and out winner. I'm sure these other managers are as well, but knowing Stevie and playing with him and now seeing what he, what he did at Rangers and what he could do next, I just think it, it was an unbelievable uh, move from him. And one he couldn't turn around, turn down to get back into the Premier League as well. And um, I think Dean Smith as well, we know what he can do. He's, he, he's a good manager, well organised. He knows he's got a big job, big job on his hand. And then we're looking at Eddie Howe at Newcastle as well. Eddie, good manager. Can he go somewhere and do it? Didn't really do it at Burnley. He was kind of at Bournemouth. He was happy, wasn't he? His family are obviously around there. Making a move to Newcastle will help upset the apple cart a little bit. Who knows? But I think this is a, it's a big season for Eddie Howe as well if he wants to push forward into being a top manager again. Yeah, Don Matteo being biased. I, I, I can't... Can't imagine it. That would be no, un never. unthinkable. Never. Absolutely unthinkable. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at the Premier League fixtures this weekend. It's, yeah. uh, you always look at them and there's ones that stand out really. I mean, ours is one of those that stands out against uh, Spurs down at Tottenham. Uh, other games as well to get your thoughts and predictions on. Uh, Leicester and Chelsea both won all draws last time out. Chelsea at home to Burnley with a one all draw, but they are the yeah. league leaders at the moment. What, where do you see that one going? Um... I'm being honest, I think it'd be like you said, it's a it's a good game, but I think I think Chelsea um nick it. I think they just they're just they're a good side, aren't they? Let's be honest. They're well organised, they know what they're doing. Um the manager's brilliant, in my opinion, one of the best. So I, I think I think Chelsea will will win that game comfortably. Uh, and just another one to pick out as well. Uh, Arsenal taking on Liverpool, fourth versus fifth. Yep. Arsenal currently second in the yeah, uh, table for form right now. Just yep. got an unbelievable run together. Sure. They could leapfrog Liverpool if they beat them uh, in that match. Who's going to win that? Uh, it's a tough one, this, to call. I think that might be a draw. Um, I, I generally do believe that Arteta is getting so much stick. I didn't think it was warranted. He's a top, top guy, top manager now. Um, being under Pep Guardiola has learned obviously a lot from him as well but give him some credit himself he's his own man he went and done his own thing and he's improved them massively just I think the way they play as well they're harder to play against Arsenal are too easy to play against they're a bit tougher now a bit more physical maybe that's something he's installed into them but yeah I, I think it, that might be a draw I mean I'm hoping I'm wrong but I think it, I think it will be a draw um, and yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good game though and like, like you say for Arsenal's point of view they'll, they'll be thinking they might have a chance of getting the Champions League this year. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, putting Liverpool out the top four if they beat them uh, on in that game we'll see as well. That. We'll see. <laughs> just, just, I'll just push you on there. Just see where you went with it. Uh, OK, not long now to go if you're wanting to pick your players for this week's fantasy football. It's the latest game week. And Luke's got some suggestions of some players that might get you a few extra points. Here are my five top picks for game week 12. Number one, Reese James. Four goals and three assists from only four starts this season. You can leave him out of your team. Number two, João Cancelo. Cancelo is the highest scoring defender, so you can certainly rely on him to pick up points. This weekend against Everton, who haven't won a game since September, Man City should control this one. Number three, Connor Gallagher. His confidence will be high having earned his first England cap on Monday and he's scored in his last two games for Palace. This weekend they are against Burnley so there's definitely an opportunity for him to score more goals. Number 4 Ivan Toney He's yet to prove himself in the Premier League but against his old club Newcastle he will be eager to get on the score sheet. And finally number 5 Cristiano Ronaldo. He's only scored one goal in his last six Premier League games, so you know against Watford he's going to be taking his chances in front of goal. Get him in your team and get him captained. Football is for everyone and we are committed to fighting for equality for all. Prejudice and abuse must not be tolerated anywhere. Not that Ellen Road, away from home or online. We will continue the fight against any form of discrimination. The fight against racism. The fight against homophobia. And the fight against anti-Semitism and all other religious discriminations. We all want to play our part and end the abuse people suffer. It needs to be removed from our game. Those who disagree are not welcome. Everyone, everyone should, should be equal. equal. Equality, Equality for, for everyone. everyone.
So this weekend's game is the 100th meeting in all competitions between Leeds United and Tottenham Hotspur. New manager in place for a couple of weeks now for Antonio Conte. Uh, is it a case that when we played Norwich and uh, playing Watford as well, we played them at good times in terms of managerial cycles, that yeah. was at the end of theirs, much harder when a new man has come in? Yeah, and I think someone like Conte as well, he's, um, he's a clever manager, he's won stuff, he knows what he's doing. and. Uh, I think they're going to be a hard team to play against. He, that's one thing he will install into Spurs is strength and also utilising players at the right times. I think he'd be good at that and maybe trying to get a, a bit of a tune out of certain players, Deli Alley, people like that. And yeah, I, I think we'll see a massive change with Spurs because they have been another one that we talked about being a little bit soft, a bit naive. And I think under him, he won't allow that. You've seen the way he is on the, on the touchline. He's at it and he's in people's faces. And I think, I think that'll actually help Spurs. If it doesn't, there's nothing down for you as a player because I like that kind of passion. I think he brings passion and excitement. Um, and a typical Italian kind of manager and the player, obviously, and they know how to win and they'll win, either, win any way they can possible. At times, Chelsea weren't good to watch really under him, but he's, he's not bothered. If they get the results, that's all that matters to him. And that's the type of manager he is. In terms of Leeds from a defensive point of view, actually, from the expected goals against, they're, they're doing really well. Yes. Uh, four conceded in the last five. Yeah. You might not have necessarily thought that when you look no. at, at the points tally so far, but they have because they were certainly shipping more goals at the beginning of the season. Yeah. You've seen an improvement in that? I have massively. Um, we've talked about it a few times, haven't we? I'm, I, as an ex-defender, I'm always trying to improve that. And it's not having a go. It's wanting the club to, and the players to do better. That's all I ever want when I, when I try and talk like that. It's, it's just honesty. I think sometimes as a player as well, you have to understand yourself. When you've had a few bad weeks, you, you, what do you do? You go back to the training ground, you work harder and you, you put things right. And I think that's what they've done. And I think, the, uh, I think uh, obviously the manager's a massive part in that in the coaching staff. But I also think as well, Coops as well. I've seen Coops being more vocal. Um, we know he's vocal, he's the captain, but I think his performances as well have really impressed me. And uh, I think as, as a defensive unit as well, they look better. They look, everyone looks like they're on the same page again. For a while, we're a bit all over the place, but now we're a bit more solid. And we have to bring that into this game against Tottenham because this is going to be a tough game. They'll be up for it. Beautiful stadium. Sometime when you as a player, you go to these nice stadiums, you look up and you're like, whoa, this is amazing. <laughs> Forget all that. Go and do a job. Get the, get the three points or get a point, wherever it might be, and get yourself home. But it's going to be a, a great game. And um, one that I'm sure the Leeds fans will be looking forward to going to as well because of the, of the stadium as well. Yeah, we'll be talking about the Leeds approach to that game uh, and also the key battles uh, that might be uh, coming to fruition over the weekend. But before we do that, uh, let's find out what the Spurs fans have been thinking because it started with Nuno, there was the controversy with Kane. Now Antonio Conte is in place. So how are Spurs fans feeling about the season so far? And of course, this week's match, LUTV's Jack Durkin went to find out. We're joined this week by Ben from We Are Tottenham TV. Ben, thanks a lot for coming on, mate. Thanks for having me, mate. Always good uh, to talk football. Now the international break is over. I'm excited to get back to Premier League football now. I really am. Looking forward, you've probably got a bit more hope and a bit more excitement uh, in and around the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. How do you think your season's been so far, Ben? Uh, to be honest, it's been nothing short of shocking. It's been absolutely shocking. Um, Look, we, we bring in Nuno after 75 days of waiting for a new manager, which was shocking in itself. I mean, the club uh, Spurs have just been run like a circus over the last couple of years since Pochettino has left. Touching on your players, who do you think has been your standout player this season for you guys? I think the wing backs. I think Sergio Regulon um, has really come on this season. He had a poor um, second half of the season last year after a really strong first half of the season. Um, and I think he's really uh, taken it up a notch this season, uh, attacking from the left-hand side. I think he's got the most chances created from any fullback in the league this season, uh, Sergio Regulon. And on the other side to that, Emerson Royale, um, mm -hmm. he had a bit of a shaky start for Spurs at the beginning. But, you know, game on, game on, he's he's improving every week. So I'm really excited to see what Conte can do with those two, because as you know, you know, he loves that flying fullback system with three at the back. Back to the game this weekend, Ben. Um, score prediction and how do we think the game's going to go? 
I think it's going to be, um, you know, I think Spurs are going to be very tight in defence. Obviously, we're going to play three at the back with the two wing backs. Um, I got a feeling that this, sorry to say it, but I got a feeling that this weekend is going to be the birth of the Conte era for Spurs. I think we're going to come out with a point to prove this weekend. Um, Leeds haven't really kickstarted their season yet. So I think it could be, um, unfortunately to say for you guys, I think it could be a fixture that's come at the right time for us. Um, So I'm going to go for 2-0 to Spurs. So, Dom, two games against Spurs last season, a win for both teams, um, a bit of a humbling one yeah. down at Spurs, but it really sort of showed the evolution of the team in the Premier League last year that by the end of the season, yeah. they were able to turn that around with a 3-1 win at Ellen Road. How do they approach this one? I think they're obviously a good team, new manager now involved, so they're going to be up for it. There's no two ways about that. You expect a reaction when you get a new manager coming in, that, that's for sure. Um, whether it's good or bad, hopefully it's bad f- for them and good for Leeds. But that's what happens sometimes. And I think, I, I generally think that th- this game is, is going to be a very open game, I think, because obviously defensively, although Leeds have got better, defensively, there's no two ways. We've, we've mentioned that and I think they are, they are improving. But they'll have to be at it again, have to start well, do things right in the early part of this game. Don't only be a couple, couple of goals down early on, because I think that's when the confidence into a Spurs team because they're quite nice, nice team, nice to watch, some good tran- fancy players on the ball. We've got to get around them early doors and make sure we win our, our key battles, our personal battles. You win your personal battles in the first part of the game, all over the football field, you'll usually win the game. So it's important that we do start well. I know we say this every week when we talk about this, but it is this one for me, personal battles are everything. You win more personal battles than the other team, you win the game. And again, the players take that into it. If, the, if, the play, if the players do that, I think we'll be all right. Let's just dig into those key battles a little bit. I mean, we've, yeah. we've talked quite a lot about Harry Kane naturally, so we know the centre-backs are going to be uh, busy, they're going to be on their toes. Where else do you see those key battles on, on the pitch? I think in a game like this, obviously, Calvin Phillips, obviously been away with his country, in, in great form, great player. I think him up against Hoiberg, I think there's, for me, I know, I know it might be an unusual pick that, it's just, I just feel that both of them players do a job for the team so well. And, the, you know, he, he's quite a physical player. Calvin's physical as well, but he like, he's better on the ball. But I think sometimes that b- battle in the midfield, whoever comes out on top of that can sometimes get, you know, the confidence grows in other players. So I think that Calvin's got a really important jo- job um, at Spurs to kind of defensively, when he gets the opportunity as well, we know he can do the defensive side, but I, I'd like to see him get on the ball. And I think because maybe if we... If, if, we think the way that Marcelo Bielsa might play, there might be an opportunity to get Calvin more on the ball and be more attacking, have more of an attacking threat against the Spurs because you're going to have to have that. And obviously, with the performances, obviously, last week against Leicester, I think, I think he might keep the two kind of sitting midfielders like he did. I think Adam Forshaw is the one player that... I'm so glad I've mentioned him because I think his performance performances have been absolutely outstanding. To come back from so long out, to come back and perform like that, I'm actually glad he got a little bit of a rest to get back into that because it t- might have took a bit out of him. And let's be honest, he was he was outstanding. So I think if he if he if he's on it, it might just release Calvin a little bit further forward when we need him to be. And at times, them two can sit in front as well and do the, the job defensively. So I think if them two play, which I think they think they will, if they're both fit and ready to go, I think that stick that will be a key area. If we can do that well and get other people on the ball attacking wise, I think that gives us a real opportunity. Yeah, you mentioned Adam Forshaw. If you haven't had a yeah. chance to watch it on the uh, Leeds United app, go and have a look at his interview after that Leicester game because you sort of felt the emotion coming through of that first full game in a couple of years, thanking Rob Price and the team, the medical team, his family yes. as well, and yeah. everyone who's. Uh, stood by him, it is uh, well worth a look. Uh, in just a moment, Don, we're going to get your prediction. So just have a little okay. musing no over that. Uh, before we do, let's go to the Nine Darts Challenge. It is the time of the captain, uh, Liam Cooper. Will Luke Ayling be able to hold off another challenger? No spoilers, but I think the answer is probably going to be yes. Super, Doper, Liam, Cooper. Eight, 17, that's rubbish, absolutely rubbish. I'm not happy with my darts, Max. 14, 19, 20.
So there you go, absolutely uh, appalling from Liam Cooper. We're, we're rebranding Super Duper <laughs> Liam Cooper. Uh, if you have any suggestions of something more <laughs> apt now, uh, just use the hashtag. I can't say mine. The, the warm up. <laughs> <laughs> Family show, Dom. Keep it, uh, keep it all good. Okay, uh, back to this week's action. Uh, all that's left to do is to get your score prediction, Dom. We know it's going to be a tough game. We know there's a new manager in place, but we also like to take a bit of positivity with us, don't we? So, we do. uh, what are you thinking for for this match? I think it's a great game, as we've already mentioned. I'm going to go for two two. Two two. Two two. I, I do think, well, the Leeds fans may say, "Oh, we should be going for the win." I just think if we can get a draw at Spurs. I think it'll be a good result and we can move forward. Because we've obviously got our next game is going to be away again at Brighton. So another tough game. But that's one I think we can get three points in at Brighton. Then we get into our home games and that's where we'll pick up more points. All right, 2-2 two -two says Dom. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. All the action, of course, on LUTV. Your commentary team will be Bryn Law and Tony DiRigo. Enjoy the match. Have a fab weekend.